where brevity is paramount. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Chet and John's Reassuringly Finite Gaming Playlist. My name's John Denton and with me, as always, is Chet Roivas. What happening? So if you've not heard this podcast before, it's really simple. Uh, it's two top ten lists, basically. Um, we've each got a list of the game we've played the most this week. Uh, we reel them off from ten down to one, ten being the game we played the least, one being the game we played the most. And because we're both fortunate enough to work in the games industry, uh, we get stuff early and can talk about the stuff that's not even out yet. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that kind of stuff. Enough for the wittering. Uh, let's start with Chips, number ten. Okay, right, my number ten is Sin, is Mon- Sin and Punishment 2 on the Nintendo Wii. Uh, I met up with some friends over the weekend and they all play games uh, and they're like me or like you they have to have every machine you know there's no point in limiting it to having one machine and one of them has inexplicably sold all of his consoles apart from one guess which one the Wii no um the Game Boy <laughs> well, no Xbox no uh, PS3. Yes, he's right. one of the, he's one of those guys now. So everything related to PS the PS3 might as well have been shut out by his mother because he won't have a bad word said against it. Oh uh, no! And we got into a an, I'll call it a discussion, but we were both drunk and we have the most intense love hate relationship of any people that have ever lived. So it was more like uh, just hurting expletives of each other. But he said, as all PS3 lovers do, that that's got the best exclusives. Uh, and in, in in with regards to the Xbox 360, if it's a face-off between those two, I'd say, yeah, fair enough. I think I'll give him that one. But if you think that the exclusives on the PS3 are better than the ones on the Wii, you're on fucking crack. Um, and the discussion prompted me to pick up one of my favourite Wii games of all time, one of my favourite games of all time, Sin of Punishment 2. I only played it for 15 minutes, so I'm going to delve into it over the weekend, but Christ, it's a masterpiece. And if you haven't played it and you have a Wii in your house, get it. It's... Incredible, incredible, incredible. And it's got a boss who calls you a perv when you hit him. (laughs) That's good. What what type of game is it for people that don't know? Uh, It's a shooter, but you have control of the guy. Super Harrier, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's broadly speaking that, but it's just relentlessly bright ideas. I mean, I love cave shooters for what they do in that respect, but Treasure, this reminds me, when they're on form... They piss on any cave shooter, and this is this is probably their finest game. It's just it's a really intense, funny. Uh, the whole time I was playing it, you know how you feel when you leap out of your chair and you score an amazing game in FIFA, just like ah, yeah, I yeah. was like that. I only played it fifteen minutes, but the whole time I was like, ah, I just wanted to fucking dry hump my TV or something. It's, <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, if you haven't played it, shit, good. I haven't played it. No, I've always meant to play it. But, yeah, I th- you know, I th- the week. It's uh, yeah. It, just play it. That's. The, I mean, it's just. It, I forgot how much I fucking love that that game, and I'm going to play it over the weekend and just uh, bask in the glory. Bask in the glory. Genuine. Right. Uh, my number ten is um, FIFA. In fact, it's FIFA Football 12 on the Vita. Uh, I only have the demo of this, but I play it quite a lot. It reminds me. You. You probably liked this when you were a kid. I used to have so many demo discs, like from oh, yeah. official PlayStation or even back in Amiga format. Just that all my games were demos, I think, and I just used to keep them religiously and play them. Um, on the Vita, everything seems to have a demo, and because you can just download it and have it on the main menu, it's kind of cool. You can have a shitload of good quality demos. And um, it's almost enough for me, I think, that one match between Barca and AC. You get to see the game for, for what it's worth. You get to play with good players. You don't get fucked off by playing online. And I think it's better than FIFA 12. Are you, uh, blimey. It's, because, it's basically FIFA 11, though, isn't it? It's it's sort of the best bits of FIFA 12 with um, without the tactical defending and some of the, the shitty bits of FIFA 12, I find. Um, apart from the fact that you can jab the back of the back of the Vita and that Did you use up, that? that's annoying. I didn't use it deliberately, but like you, I've got flappy hands, so yeah, it, it happens sometimes. But um, yeah, it, it feels like FIFA 12 without tactical defending, which is bang on for me. Um, no, I, I like tactical defending. The only thing I didn't miss is the, the, the irritating, you know, when you get fucked over because the animations all decide to bundle on top of each other and stuff. Um, I really liked it, but yeah, I, I think FIFA 12 pisses on it, to be honest. But then I thought FIFA 12 was better than FIFA 11, so... I think FIFA 12 is better than FIFA 11 in many ways, but I like the concept of tactical defending. I just don't like the execution. Uh, it's too laboured and it's too easy to walk through. It's far too much of an advantage for the attacker. Um, it doesn't capture the fact that in real defending you can grab hold of people and you know you don't just have to time a tackle exactly right. You can use your body and 
and sort of push people around and use space a lot better than you can. I, I like where they're going, and I'm sure they'll nail it. And if if not next year, then the year after. But uh, yeah, a little bit of work to be done on that one, I think. So but you're not yeah, going to buy the you're not going to buy the full game. Or on the Vita. Yeah. It's like it's it's the most expensive game on the machine, I think. No, weirdly. it's not more expensive than Uncharted, is it? Yeah, I think it's like forty-four quid, what? which is a hell of a lot of money for a Vita game. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, probably not, because that, that it pretty much gives me enough I, just for a quick game of football every now and then. That okay. demo. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Okay. Right. My number nine, Texas Hold'em on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Um, I Drunk. don't know why. I, I, I've no idea why I turned it on. Uh, it's. It, they gave it away free about four years ago. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, it was like free for about two weeks and everyone I know Everyone went mental for it. Yes. Um, and I just turned it on purely out of interest to see if you could still get a game because that new one came out full house with the implementation of the avatars and stuff and friends of mine who are really into poker have since upgraded to that. Uh, but yeah, Texas Hold'em, I jumped straight into a, a full full table game and it's... Uh, yeah, it's as good as... I, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd pay any extra for a poker game because that's got everything you need. Uh, it's fine, but it's just... does everyone just still go all in? Because... No, it's the sa- every game follows the same pattern as it pa- pattern as it does in every online poker game where real money's not at stake. Everyone checks, and then Johnny Big Bollocks, the last guy to go in, goes all in. <sighs> Is he bluffing? I don't, you know, it's just it, 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 the, the routine's the same, but. You know, it was fine, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still. I just wanted to see if it was still working, and it is. So there you go. All right. Do anyway. Uh, yeah, my number nine is um, kind of in a similar vein to you, just something that I haven't played for a while and stuck on on Xbox Live. Um, Pac-Man Championship Edition. Oh, that's wicked. Um, yeah, I put it on now and again, just purely for the catharsis of when you get the pill and you just turn it right back on those cunts and chase them down, <laughs> chomp them all up. I love it. Uh, I- sort of came to uh, realisation with the game that I'm not going to be chasing high scores or, you know, worrying any leaderboards. I just play it like I used to play games for, just for fun yeah. every now and then. It's just a laugh. I, I don't think I'm amazing at it, but, yeah, if you've not played it before, it's, it is Pac-Man, but uh, they have this great mechanic where all the ghosts kind of line up. I'm doing a poor job of explaining it. So when you get a pill, you can kind of chase them down and combo them together. And oh man, it's so satisfying. Do, 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 and the, the music goes, and um, yeah, they smashed it. Uh, yeah, for for uh, I never thought a Pac-Man game would be that. Everyone I know who's tried it went out and bought it straight after. It is really fucking good. I need to get back into yeah. that actually. Um, yeah, I just put, pop it on every now and then just for for ten minutes. Can't beat it really for that. No, you're right. You're right. Um, okay, my number eight. Another game that I randomly put on because I saw it on my hard drive and I thought, eh, hey, why not? Tower Blocks Deluxe. Hey, Tower Blocks. Uh, what? What a funny game. It's amazing how something that simple can be that captivating. Um, and I remember when I first discovered it around your place, when we would just didn't do anything else for the best part of an entire weekend, um, just stacking blocks one on top of the other. I mean, it's ridiculous. But I remember coming home and but finding it on the marketplace and I've never been so confident that I was getting my 800 points worth I did not even in the best of times when you buy something on marketplace I think twice I think uh, is anything else coming out blah 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 but in that instance I was just like of course it's worth 800 points and uh, it's it's ridiculously enjoyable and sickeningly simple but yeah stacking blocks all the way up into space yes uh, nerve wracking to say this to uh, say it, the least. later on yeah especially if you because it's got that constant reminder to the right of the next high score of your friends yeah. that's to beat but yeah it's great you get into a flow don't you when you're doing it and then you just lose it completely yeah it's, and it's the tiniest thing that can set you off and it can be maddening but yeah it's, yeah. Uh, it's, still, it's still good I just it, there's something very funny about the fact that that's as captivating as it is you know in any other form you know a book a movie, anything that captivates you, that <laughs> tends to be a bit more complicated than fucking dropping. But I remember I picture us around your place. You know, there, how many of us were there? Like six people, all staring yeah, at the screen, like, yeah. can't, you know, gripped. Yeah. It was when we all suddenly realised how how far you could get in the game. You could go up into space because I think we'd only ever played it for about five minutes before that. Yeah. Good times. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It's well, yeah. I'll play it again. Yeah, so will I. Now you've mentioned it. <laughs> Uh, right now, my number eight is a game that I've been playing on and off quite a lot for the last few weeks. Is uh, Grid Runner again on iOS? Oh. Um, it's just one of those any time I get five minute jobs, really, just fills the time perfectly. It's so well suited to the screen, and uh, yeah, it, it, I'm wildly inconsistent at it. Sometimes I'm brilliant, I don't get hit for ages, and sometimes it's just fucking shit. But it's always fun, and the little power ups that fall down the screen look like they just look like donuts, and it's so, it's so nice to collect them, and it, they, then you get some weird 
bullets that spray and spin all over the place like a Catherine wheel for a second. And yeah, it's just, I don't really know why it's so addictive. You can see how well designed it is if you want to get into the nitty gritty, but ultimately it's just a perfect way to, to while away a few minutes when you're, I don't know, waiting for something more important in your life to happen. Um, I know I've asked you this before. What is it? Is there a free trial? Is it free? It's remember. 69 penneth. Okay. 69 earth pence. Uh, well worth it, mate, especially for, for the stuff that you like. I, I get it. Yeah, I might yeah. do. I yeah. might do. Grid run. I'll remember that. Yeah, it's good fun. Genuine. Uh, okay, my number seven. Halo Reach. Oh, um, really? It's another game that's sitting on my shelf that I beat it when it came out. Uh, beat it. I hate that phrase. Yeah, I, I know. completed That's it. Pick you up on it. Yeah, I completed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. I, I can't believe I just said that. I'm going to fucking smash my head in after this. Uh, I completed it when it came out and I did it on Legendary with three people or two people or something afterwards. Uh, but I still wanted to do it on Legendary on my own. Um, and I still, I, I forgot how amazing Legendary is on Halo. I really, I, I, I've completely forgotten. Um, it's a pro. It's a, there's an achievement for doing it on your own on legendary, and that having that on your gamer card is actually an achievement as far as I'm concerned because it, you do have to use all manner of skills to get there. You know, if you've got if you beat Black Ops on the hardest difficulty, all that says to me is that you've got a ridiculous amount of patience. Yeah. Um, because there's no real skin involved. You just, I mean, Call of Duty games on the hardest difficulty setting are a perverse joke. I mean, I don't know how people find the time to do that. Um, but yeah, Halo Reach. Um, I'd, I'd forgotten how good it was anyway but on Legendary it's just brilliant although it, the learning curve of the process of remembering how great it was took about half an hour because every 30 seconds for about yeah for about half an hour what's the fucking point what's the fucking point that's what I kept saying my girlfriend was going fucking bananas in the kitchen when she was cooking because I was like what's the fucking point she was like turn that fucking game off and I was like <laughs> because you do just die I, I'd, for some reason I'd stopped playing it in the middle of a massive ruck with all the uh, surrounded by elites and all this oh, stuff oh yeah yeah What's the fucking point? Because it's so difficult, but you just you have to outsmart it, and that's it, it's it's incredible. The the sense of achievement is brilliant, and I'm I'm going to uh, finally finish it. I think I'm in the final sort of third of the game, and uh, yeah, I just I had forgotten completely how great Reach was. If you got to that bit where you hook up with the ODSTs and start jetpacking over the gaps, I love that bit. That's one of my favourite bits in anything. My memory of it, I, I know I've I've done the spaceship fight. It's and just then, up. It's like a couple of levels after that. I think. Yeah, the bit I've just started. You're on the. You're, you're back on back on Earth. Is it? I can't fucking remember. You're on a planet oh, yeah. anyway. Yeah, I think it's Earth or yeah. Reach. Is it Reach? It's going to be Reach, isn't it? Obviously, it's, pro- it's probably Reach. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. And I call myself a Halo expert. <laughs> well, uh, it's yeah. It's. I, I'm looking forward to it. Going back. It's the best uh, best legendary since the first one, I think. Uh, yes, because Halo Three it really upset me because well, it upset me. It fucked me off. Um, that you could get shot by a sniper one hit yeah. dead it's like what's the point of that and friends of mine have been like oh no but it's realistic isn't it I'm like well, what am I supposed to do bang you dead oh realistic. brilliant it's fucking space aliens <laughs> no, but you know what I mean it's like I if know. you were playing a multiplayer that's someone pulled off a good shot but what are you ch- you know what are you saying kind words about if a computer just zaps you in the head and you're dead and you have to go and redo a section yeah. bollocks but uh, less of a problem in reach oh, yeah. it hasn't happened to me in reach yet so hopefully it's not yeah I've been meaning to go and do that again myself I'm about two levels in on Legendary and it just sits there I do want to go through it again because it is fucking fantastic yeah Uh, right this is a complete antithesis of what you just said my number seven is a game called Being with two E's on the iPhone which I had to review fucking hell Angry Birds with Bees uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's not, because it's not the same gameplay. It's uh, like you scroll from left to right and you can use the touch screen to move the B up and down and dodge things, but you've played this game before a million times. It just didn't happen to have a B in it. It's got that kind of pre-rendered Donkey Kong Country-style graphics. Uh, the B's like... I don't know why bees in video games fucking speak like that, because there's one in Sonic that speaks like that as well. Uh, it's just one of those games that makes you think, I never want to play an iPhone game ever again. And the game's actually not that bad. It's fine. It works. You could see how someone could play it and enjoy it if they've never played games before. But, yeah, dull as dishwater, I've written in my notes. Is it which free? is No, it's 69p. Standard. Uh, I think. Is there, yeah. is there DLC for it? Uh, probably, probably unlocks to get more. It's just I just played it all before. It might as well not have even happened as I was doing it. Um, yeah, it just fucks me off that 
type of thing, but it's more and more of it on the App Store because that's what makes money. True. Mid-range money. True. Uh, did you have to review it? Yeah, I did. What did you give it? Uh, I gave it six because, you know, you have to take it on its own to a certain degree and it is a perfectly functional game. But as someone, you know, who plays a, f- a lot of games and has done for however many years, I'm perhaps not the exact audience of a game like that. Yeah. So, you know, you have to... I'd want to give it a fucking one, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, my number six is Hero Academy on the iPhone. Uh, it's starting to get me. Um, it took me really throwing my toys out and sort of vowing never to play it again in order for that to happen. Um, have you... You've bought some of the packs, some of the extra... I've got the elves, I haven't got the dwarves. Are you at a massive advantage if you have one of those? No. Really? I thought the doors were at first, and then I realised that they weren't. I, just, I mean, maybe they've got different moves and stuff, haven't they? Because I'm they playing, do. yeah, I'm playing with a mate, and he's doing stuff. And I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to know what you know how to yeah. defend against something like that? Um, but yeah, I, I'm just getting annihilated by a mate, and I just said I'm never playing it again. And then I went back, and I had uh, you know I reevaluated the situation. And I'm still going to lose, but. I've done a bit more damage to him than uh, than planned. I, I I still I still don't quite understand the mad love for it because I have a real problem with the um, the fact that you only get five moves. I find it really hard to implement that into my sort of uh, battle plan. I don't know why I find that so difficult. It's just I, there's something I love so much about Advance Wars, knowing that you've got one move for everything you've for got. Everything, and you can, yeah. yeah, and this 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 feels kind of that doesn't feel as rewarding to me. But I'm, it's still I mean I'm playing it a fuck of a lot now. Um, yeah. Once I, I don't my... think it is as good as Advance Wars, anywhere near. But I think thought it is. Yeah. It's no, I'm great uh, fun. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm going to stick with it, and I'm still enjoying it. So it's, uh, you know, once I win my first game, as you said, that might be the turning point. I mean, yeah, I'm... that was great for me. And yeah. I mean, for one of those uh, asynchronous iPhone games, it's got a lot more legs than a draw something, or you know, what it feels like a proper what game. something. Oh, like a draw something, you know. It's, yeah, it no, I was like take the bits because, like, what the fuck's draw something? Who cares? Oh, right, yeah. Old hat. It's yeah, like yeah. an eighties. It's like an eighties power pop song. <laughs> a trick it. from the eighties. Yeah, uh, it's um, yeah, it's got legs. But those guys have been making, you know, it's the ex ensemble people that made fucking Halo Wars and all the all the Age of Empires and all that shit. So yeah, yeah they know their shit. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very good. I, I'm not in love with it yet, but yeah, I'm going to stick with it. Right, uh, I'm on the iPhone as well for number six, um, Angry Birds Space. Still? Uh, yeah, my little nephew, well, my girlfriend's nephew, whatever, came to, to see us last week and he likes Angry Birds, so I thought I'd show him the new one and we both played it for a little bit and yeah, it impresses me more and more every single week. It, it really is a, a much better game than Angry Birds to the point where I actually wonder if it's too complicated for the Angry Birds audience, you know, that huge, huge audience. Maybe I mean, that's not... why they haven't been trumpeting a million downloads in five seconds or whatever yeah. like you'd expect them to. It's, uh, you know, it's not a complicated game for at all, really. It's it's clever and it has um, really cool orbital physics, which I've talked about before. But it is more complicated than simply pulling back the thing and, you know, hitting pigs. You do have to think about angles and gravity and... Uh, you know, and orbits and things like that, and yeah, it, it's a smart game. But like I said, I do wonder if people looking for that brainless iPhone fill five minutes while you're waiting at the doctors or whatever people play those games for. I think it might be a bit too. Yeah, just have a couple of systems too many. Maybe I may be wrong, and it may be just as popular. I, I haven't seen any figures. Um, I need, to, yeah, I do need to play that. Angry Birds always left me cold. I never bought into the craze. I never really understood it. It's like Hero Academy. I mean, like I thought it was perfect. You could tell it worked. You could tell it was fun, but I, I, I found nothing in it to love. But th- I'm going to try this. I think just um... uh, it certainly is reminiscent of Mario Galaxy. It, it goes, oh, it makes you go, oh, that's clever. Yeah, I like that. That's smart. A lot. Which or I would never have expected from an Angry Birds sequel, as I said last week. Have you seen everything it's got to offer? Have you unlocked all the levels and stuff? No, no, no. I'm just playing it sparingly, a few levels at a time here and there. There's more. I probably wouldn't have even played it, but you know, the kid wanted to see it. Okay, fair play. Uh, I'm going to try that. Uh, my number five probably might hold off on talking about it because I assume it's higher up on your list. The Witcher Two. Uh, yeah, it's my number two, I think. Okay, um, I'll be brief then, 
I, I was really, uh, they, I'm really not convinced that they, yeah, the tutorial, what did you think of the tutorial? Tutorial, God, that was so long ago. What, what even happens in the tutorial? Uh, you go and heal that guy who's lying outside the house and then you go into the arena and... Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I had to, well, I had to do it twice because the game actually crashed on me. Um, but I probably would have done it twice anyway, just because I w my worry with the game was always how the hell are they going to put all of that massive PC game onto a 360 pad and g being given all that relentless information with text boxes and then being forced to do it. I mean, I was just constantly bringing back old menus and just it didn't feel it felt not slapdash, just kind of. It wasn't particularly mindful of how console gamers play games. It seemed to be, the, you know, I would have preferred a much more organic. The way it was done in the PC version, it wasn't as like brutally like boom, learn this. Um, right. But aside from that, fuck, it's. I mean, it's it's it really is. It's just something else. It really is a fantastic game still. Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about it a bit more in depth later in the list, but. Um, yeah, I've been playing a fair bit more. And uh, yeah, you're right about the tutorial. There's a hell of a lot of information to take in at once. And I was almost laughing at it as I was doing it. So I was thinking, these crazy polls. Nobody's going to remember any of this. I'm certainly not. But I but found... even it's not even remembering it. It's like they say, here's how you do this, and then they make you do it. And I, yeah. I was like, well, well, bring up that menu and then put that there. And I was like, ah. Yeah. The um, weird thing is when you actually get into the game, the game you it's don't fine. need anywhere near as much of that information. Well, you do at certain you junctures, do. but but yeah, but I feel I actually am learning it organically as I as I play through. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the tutorial is an odd one. I don't think but, they even needed it to be honest. They could have. They yeah, probably just, not. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, mm. you can skip it. I think so. Maybe uh, people should skip it, or maybe they shouldn't. I yeah, don't know. See, that, that's difficult because you, there's so much you need to know. And the, what yeah. my advice would would be: do it twice. It only takes pff, less than Five ten minutes. minutes. Or something, yeah. Um, so I'd say do it twice, just so you, because I felt I felt a lot better about it after I'd done it twice. But still, it's uh, it's it, it's a really intimidating. When it, when when I first did it, I was like, oh god, this is like a, the worst headache in the world, and they fucked yeah. it, and it's not going to work on the 360. It does, it definitely does, but that's not an advert for its success at all. Yeah, we'll go back into it again in a minute. Cool, but you are right. Um, my number five is uh, Luminez again. Nice. Um, after last week, my arms have healed. Uh, they don't hurt anymore, and I am now wary of playing the game for a long stretch of time. So, I'll just play, a, select a couple of skins that I like, you know, four or five, and just play through that, enjoy the music. And uh, it's probably not the way it should be played, but I don't ever want to break my arms like that again. So, yeah, it's a strange, a strange love affair I now have with Luminous because I slightly fear it. But how I don't understand. That's a game that I don't understand how you can play and then say, right, I've had enough of that. I, it's a game that. Not only do I not want to stop playing, when it goes on for an hour and a half, I can't because it's all about high scores. I don't know how you sort of do a couple of skins and then put it down. Uh, well, I think my brain works slightly different to yours, where I don't get as sucked into stuff like that as you do, just generally across those types of games and all types of games. Um, I, I play it less for the score and more just for the feeling of being in it. All right. yeah, the kind of res type feeling... Um, What's he called it? Synesthesia? I guess it's the same feeling. Yeah. But I just like it. It makes me feel really relaxed. But if I play it for too long, it starts to physically hurt. Um, starts to give me sort of wishy-washy eyes as well and a headache. And then I'm kind of defeating the object of why I came into it in the first place. But I wish I could play it for an hour and a half and it didn't do those things. But, yeah, I was out of commission. I was out of commission, mate. I couldn't work. Yeah, OK. Well, that's pretty severe. So uh, understandable then, I guess. But uh, you're missing out. Just maybe, uh, maybe. Sell it but who's case. got uh, who's got who's got ninety minutes? Really? I'll, I'll set ninety minutes aside for Luminous for sure. Yeah, but I ain't got ninety minutes. Neither have I. But you know, you make time for the classics, boy. You do, you do. Uh, Put that child to bed. And yeah, play a puzzler. Exactly. Done. You get you get your priorities straight. Um, all right, my number four, Battlefield Three. Back up. Is that back up or is? Uh, I can't I'm remember. It's, it's 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 still lower than it should be um, the patch we had a little sesh after the patch only one so I haven't played it so much this week but um, yeah we've had a, a massive sesh uh, the, the process of a patch that big coming into a game like Battlefield you're just finding your feet for the first like few hours um, and it's still you know the majority of changes are really good There's, a, I still think that taking down air vehicles is unnecessarily difficult they've just they've just swapped it for tat they've just made it 
you know they're harder to lock onto stuff. So, I mean, it's it's hard to really because I haven't played it so much. It's hard to really put my finger on what they've changed. But it's still it remains difficult, but difficult in a different way. And you're still if you've got a, a demon of a chopper pilot, he's still decimating your entire team nonstop. Um, most of the changes are good, but they've made one change that I just don't understand. They've made the Amtrak barely as powerful as the tank, and I just don't understand the. the the Amtrak was one of the most genius things in Battlefield 3 because it could completely change change the trajectory of a match because it was so hard to defeat. It's a mobile spawn point, so in, I've lost track of the number of situations. The whole team would get into, of our opposition would get into the Amtrak, barrel into the opposition, round the back of the map, use it as a spawn point and just capture the first two points in a rush game straight away. Or when you're confident you're winning, everything's about to roll down, they've got 10 spawn tickets left, same thing. They barrel in, and you know, if your entire team aren't ready, you can't all jump on it and say, "There's an Amtrak coming." Take all, take it all down. It's going to fuck you over. Now it's just a, a mediocre tank, and I don't understand why they've done that. It's completely beggar's belief, as far as I'm concerned. I hope they change that because that was such a brilliant part of the game, such a brilliant strategic element that they've just. I don't know why they've changed it. Is it a case maybe of listening? To the loudest voices, that might have been complaining about it. That's why I worry. I mean, it, I mean, it can be frustrating when you've worked your ass off to keep them away from two points in rush, and then they, they, if the rest of your team aren't clued up, they just sort of let this Amtrak waddle into your into your base, and no one's, you know, as soon as if there's a squad of four of us, all of our attention is on that Amtrak because you have to take it out. But yeah, I do worry that if enough people bitch at dice, they change it to to appease them, despite the fact that it kind of sort of fucks the game up, up a little bit. Um, I just hope they change it again because it's it felt like a lesser game because of it. But yeah, I haven't played it enough, but we'll see. Sure, it'll be back next week. Indeed. Right, my number four is uh, Devil May Cry Three HD, nice. which uh, I've yeah, I've just been playing more of. Uh, mentioned last week that I've picked it up. I don't really have any intention of playing the other ones. I don't think in terms of the amount of time I have. I just always wanted to complete three, and I'm just just plowing through really. Um, it's just such a fucking good game. It's so well designed. It holds up so incredibly well, just as well as any of that genre in this generation. And um, it's a nice like precursor to to the new one that Ninja Theory are doing, which you know I, I think is probably going to be pretty good. I like Ninja Theory's games. So um, yeah, it, it, there's not that much to say about a game that old these days. But well, I think it's remarkable that it's held up that well because most games that old don't. Um, no. And it, the fact that you can still play it, and it still does so many of the things right that great action games today do right, I think is hugely impressive. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you haven't got back to the first one though, because that's still fucking great as well. I'm sure it is. It's just because I finished the first one. I've done that, but I never finished. I finished the second one for what it's worth. Yeah. But I never finished the third one or the fourth one. I didn't really like the fourth one. But, oh no, um, I didn't. What the fuck was up there? It, it, all the all the pieces were there. It just didn't feel right. Yeah, and then you had to kind of backtrack and do it all again. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. So I'm not bothered about finishing that one, but I did really want to finish three, but it was just too hard for me with the Western release without the continues. Yeah. Uh, but now that's now that's not an issue. I will just batter through it as hard as it is. And yeah, a game that's um, so reliant on its systems lives or dies by its systems. And when their systems are that good and that well designed, that's what makes it timeless. I think. You know. Yeah, genuinely. Uh, even down to stuff like the first Mario Brothers. That's why that's still so good because because the systems are so well designed even though the graphics are shitty now and you know so much more stuff has been done in and around platform gaming and I, I think that that's why Devil May Cry is still so good yeah I'm uh, I'm going to go back to 3 I gave it the least amount of time I was sort of focused on 1 and 2 but uh, yeah I'm going to I'm probably going to do 3 again because I was the same as you I got to a point and it was just it was so ridiculously tough that I uh, I bowed yeah um okay right my number 3 Ridge Racer Unbounded um Okay. What a pe- uh, it, it, uh, it's such a peculiar game. Um, almost all of its personality is in that bizarre drifting mechanic. It the game has such a it's, there's such a surfeit of personality in the rest of the game that it's quite it, you know as much uh, uh, it, uh, the comparison to Split Second are good for many reasons. But when I think back to playing Split Second, I loved it. But the, the drabness and the just the, the the lack of personality in the world meant that just driving around it was just a bit of a I don't know it just felt like it's not enough thought went the world is so, Shatter Bay it's nothing it's like I don't know as, as enjoyable as it is it's kind of I'm losing interest in it every second I play it yeah 
I don't know what to say. Chateau about. Bay. It's. I mean, it's just <laughs> so bland. I mean, even Blur. The world was kind of. Was it? Maybe it was real. Maybe world, wasn't it Blur? Oh, of course it was. That's why. Yeah. And it had the bright levels as well. Which yeah, that's. Chilled. I think that was. I mean, Blur is just a ten times better game. Um, but yeah, it's good. I mean, later on, I've started to notice the the victories tend to be quite random. Um, you know. It's not extreme. It's not like Mario Kart on the Wii where you just get fucked. But you, there just seems to be no method in it. And shortcuts, some of them don't even seem to be shortcuts. It's just, it's a haphazard game. I mean, I'm just trying to think. If, if, it, if it did play properly, if it played like a burner and it was immediately accessible, I think it would be worse for it because it would have even less of a personality. Um, the, the level editor is great that it's so simple and anyone can do it. But the, the fact that it's so basic means that the maps are fucking boring. Um it's it's a funny one. It's a funny one. I do like it, but the longer I play it, the more I'm just like, Phew. yeah. This it's not got a shelf life at all. I don't think. I mean, it's tough, isn't it, with those sorts of games? Because Burnout smashed it in the last generation with three and four, and Hot Pursuit, and, Hot Pursuit, and then Hot Pursuit, of course. Yeah. So you're dealing with high benchmarks from that many years ago. If you're yeah. not beating them now. It, it, it's kind of tough and where do you go I mean Split Second tried its thing Blur tried its thing which I loved it didn't, it didn't really get on with Split Second but yeah I can't see anyone other than Criterion really taking it to another level now yeah. in that world um, yeah it's it's very it's funny because it's like Ninja Gaiden 3 uh, I like Ridge Racer Unbounded and Ninja Gaiden 3 but I was never a massive fan of either franchise before if I was I'd be pretty pissed off because this couldn't be it. I mean the only way they could have made it less of a Ridge Racer game is if they didn't have any fucking cars in it it's just it's so it's painfully generic and yet it's fun okay yeah. I, I don't know if I'll bother no I wouldn't well ugh. just just try and get your head around that fucking I do want to try it but you know it's just dedicating the time to something like that yeah Hmm. Yeah, I'm still intrigued by it, but yeah. Hmm. 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 Right. My number three is something that I'm very, very glad that I dedicate some time to. I've been umming and ahhing about picking this up for ages, hearing conflicting reports. It's uh, Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. Uh, I still haven't played uh, it. It is. Uh, oh man, it's wicked. It, it's wicked. I, I, I as soon as I within about two minutes of the first level, I was like, of course I should have bought this. Ages ago, what was I thinking? Why would I ever question something coming out of first party Nintendo that's like a tentpole title for them? They're not going to fuck around. It's uh, you mentioned Space Harrier before in Sin and Punishment. I've played Sin and Punishment, but I'm guessing that the uh, the flight parts of Kid Icarus. Yeah, no, exactly. When I played it very E3 last that. year, I was like, this reminds me of Sin and Punishment too. So it was a great, yeah, a great indication of where they were going. Yeah, all that stuff's fucking amazing. I mean, people have talked about the controls. It is awkward to hold it, but... I don't know, I played that Metroid game on the DS with my hands, and that was awkward too. Again, reasonably big hands, and I find a 3DS awkward to hold anyway, so it's, that's not proved a problem for me. Probably helped that I knew going in that it was going to be awkward. Yeah, um, Yeah. the, the stuff where you're flying is just, it's just breathtaking. It looks, as far as I'm concerned, as good as anything on the Vita. And I don't mean in terms of detail or amount of stuff on screen or resolution but in terms of artistry and and just how fucking good it looks to look at a couple with the 3D it, it looks as good as any handheld game how how, uh, uh, how much flying stuff is there in sort of in re re relation to the stuff on the ground is they it say it's half and half I'd yeah. say it's probably more like 40 60 with 60 being the ground stuff oh right um, but maybe just because the yeah no I think I think that's probably right from what I've played so far uh, yeah, the ground stuff is far more awkward to control because you have to basically you're, you're pit on the ground. You're still shooting stuff in the distance using the left trigger like you were and uh, aiming with a stylus. But uh, now you're controlling all of his movements, whereas the other stuff's on rails. So you have to dodge. Um, you could sort of quickly jab the the analog stick to dodge, and that's the same stick as you're moving around. So it's a little. It is awkward, but. I like the fact it's kind of idiosyncratic. I don't want every game to control exactly the same because then every game feels the same. Um, I'd rather have something where I have to kind of get my head around a slightly different control scheme. But the best stuff about it, um, two things. One, there's so much content in there. There's this huge, like, loot and weapons crafting system that's done in a real, like, friendly, personal Nintendo way. 
it's like but it's got kind of rpg depth so you pick up stuff and then you can create new weapons and you're fiddling with stuff and comparing stats stuff that's boring in some games but here they've just done it fantastically loads of like little side bits and other stuff in there really really deep package and the second thing is it's really fucking funny like, i've heard that funny. i've heard there's like proper gags in there yeah it, the whole time the whole time you're playing the uh, pit is um, bantering with this goddess woman whose name escapes me um he's funny he kind of if he's not voiced by the guy who does Finn in Adventure Time it certainly sounds and acts a lot like him uh, kind of somewhere between teenage naivety and sort of sarcastic jokes um, all the enemies are funny the the goddess woman's really sarcastic and takes the piss the whole time there's those like little retro, retro references and uh, self reflexive stuff uh, one brilliant bit where you come up against a hydra it's got three heads and all the heads are arguing with each other <laughs> like well, I'm going to get you and the other guy's like no I'm going to get him I'll shit first <laughs> so um, yeah loads of loads of really funny shit I love uh, it I can't believe I haven't played it yet I can't believe I haven't played it yet that's like normally I would have just had that I'm, I'm, I'm yeah that's that's on my list that's a priority I'm, I'm, <sighs> yeah you need to get it in mate I'm going to it's, it, it's, 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 it's going to get played it gets better from where I am I've just done the fourth level literally just before we started recording and apparently it starts getting really crazy and weird it's fucking weird anyway one guy just turned me into an eggplant and that's part of the game they talk about it and it's like oh if you get turned into an eggplant I'll turn you back <laughs> but um, yeah apparently it gets even better from where I am exciting <sighs> fuck right uh, that's that's a priority that is a priority shit that sounds great um, okay my number two SSX what can back I say it. right back into it uh, did some more online. Uh, my two week hiatus or week and a half hiatus or whatever, I've come back. The the community is still as strong, so people are still playing it loads, and that's really great to see. But fuck, it's so hard to even get a bronze now on the online challenges. I'm just I'm, I'm rusty as hell, and people have just got really fucking good. Right. Um, but that's I love that. It's just I'm just need to sort of brush up my skills. But goddamn, I love everything about the game. Hearing the stupid ambient music that comes on when you turn, I'm just like ah, love it. It's so good. I still need to play it. It's still sitting there on my shelf. Oh, you, it's so yeah, good. I mean, I've played the fuck out of it before for, for reviews and things, but yeah, I need to do. I need to get stuck into this online community. Just, yeah, just do. I mean, it will recommend. It will say the busiest uh, online challenge at the moment is like you not buy in, jump straight. You can jump straight into it, or you can jump straight into the next recommendation. Any of those, and most of them, most of the time, they're always free. Yeah, just see the credits rolling in. Just be like, give me. Oh, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Your hand rubbing picked up nicely over the mic. Oh, oh genuine. Uh, right, my number two, we talked about it already, is uh, The Witcher 2. Sweet. Um, it's it's so big and overwhelming. I, I said last week that I have full and final thoughts this week. Yeah, right. Um, I don't have time to... It's it, it, it's, as, it's slightly bigger than I thought it was going to be because the first five or six hours are like this uh, the flashbacks slash yeah. um, story setting stuff, which I knew the game was going to open out, which is kind of why I got through that. I mean, you get to experience like how good the writing is during that, but it's not really the game. Then you get to the first town, Flotsam, and it was like, boof, opens up, and you've got side quests and you know, fucking arbitrary quests and main story stuff, standard RPG things, but all of it's so interesting and all of it sets each other up really well and all the quests tie into each other in the dialogue and, I mean, I'm watching Game of Thrones at the at the moment as well and it just reminds me of it so much because the way that people speak in these types of RPGs there's a real danger of having everybody speak like, oh, Lord Herod, blah, 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 you know, in that really fucking boring way and you can't keep track of anything. But in this, the guy was just burst out and going, what the, f- what the arse fuck's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's just bawdy and sweary and talking about shagging the whole time, but not in a, like, a cringeworthy way, just in a really funny, personal way. There's like a little dwarf guy who's just hilarious. Um, yeah, I've not done anywhere near enough. And, and, and going back to what you said earlier about how it works on 360, I haven't played it on PC, but... I'm hearing that it's actually maybe a better version on 360 just because the combat works much better on a pad. Yeah, it does. Uh, There's been a little update as well, which has fixed a lot of the screen tearing, I think. So there was a bit of screen tearing early on, but it doesn't seem to be that much of a problem anymore. So um, be under no illusion, it looks fucking good for for a 360 game. You could see how it could look better on PC, but yeah, this isn't a compromised version. They've, They've done it, and if you're interested in adult, mature... For in in the real and proper sense of the word, games that will challenge you um, in terms of storytelling as well as 
systematically, then The Witcher 2 is the shit. It's, uh, I dare say it's better than Skyrim. Oh, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I don't know. They're so different. They're so I just different. Like the, the, this world, I just love this world so much. And I just, like you said last week about, you can tell that it's from the source material that came before it because it feels so lived in and sort of, you know, I just, I, 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 it's so it's, rich. Skyrim feels so lived in as well. This is, it's, a, it's an argument for another time yeah. when we, we've got more time in the potty, but I haven't decided my final thoughts on those two. Because uh, yeah, I've got some ideas about it. I've got some ideas. I'll, I'll talk about it again next week. So I'll yeah. definitely play Witcher Two again for next week. Yeah, I've only done the prologue, so I'm going to sesh through it again. Or the majority. It gets of so good, dude. It just gets so much better. It turns. Oh no, into I mean, I, pl- I mean, I remember it's... it from the. From, oh, of course, when yeah. I did it yeah. on the PC. Course, but sorry. yeah, I'm just. I want to see because there's extra stuff in there. Um, I just. I always forget. There's just so. I, I love the the, the the dialogues. Just kind of zippy. Well, zippy. What yeah. Was it? Pit- it is. <laughs> Even all the just little NPCs. Uh, you know, funny and have great. Rural accents. Yeah, it's uh, not pithy. What's the word? It's just a zippy. What the fuck's the word I'm looking for? Fizzy. I, always, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I it's just, just really bawdy to me. Yeah, and just Guy Ritchie. I, I cited Guy Ritchie when I was describing it to him, and that's a terrible comparison. But just that zip that the dialogue has. Like, I mean, I, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head apart from when you're escorting the king in the prologue, and he gestures yeah. to his. Uh, he gestures to his guy with the axe. He's like, he points to tell us to get rid of the door, and he just goes, "Give me splinters." And I'm like, that's quite a fucking cool way of just telling someone to fuck up a wooden door. But it's stuff like that. It's little. It, it feels so so lived in. I don't. I don't know. I I, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm going to sesh the absolute shit out of it this weekend. Yeah, brilliant game. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, What's your number one? Number one, Mass Effect Three. Uh, we, uh, me and a few mates are doing the multiplayer, and uh, yeah, it's it's really really great. It's uh, it's very grindy. It's one of those things that feels impossible from the off. I mean, like, when we were doing it at first, we we're like, we're never going to do this. But as you level up, you know, build your soldiers, and you know all that stuff, it becomes it's still fucking hard. But um, yeah, it's really good. What uh, type of alien are you playing as? I'm just doing a soldier. That's that's what, a human. Yeah. Man, no, I'm gonna do because you do it. You you level one up to twenty, and then you go and you do another one. So we're all kind of we're we're doing it so that we're all different sort of species and people on each playthrough, so we don't double up. Um, But yeah, it's really good. Uh, The buying stuff. Last week I said about Tiger Woods how EA have made it so you can use in-game credits to buy stuff from the shop that would otherwise cost Microsoft points. Yeah, uh, they've done. I didn't realize they've done the same thing here, but it's a little bit cheeky because all of the boxes are randomized, so you never know what you're going to get. So you oh, could right. potentially spend 240 Microsoft points or whatever it is on a box, and you don't know what the fuck you're getting, which is a little bit <laughs> a little bit sly. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really good fun. It's. Uh, it's yeah, much much better than anticipating. We're going to continue on with it until we've done them all on gold. Although it seems impossible at this point. Yeah, I, I should play it, but I'm in a in a situation where I have to pay. I'd have to pay for an online pass to to play it because I got a review copy from EA. So it would be completely churlish of me to complain about that situation. But however, I don't know if I want to lay down a tenner to play a multiplayer mode that I might not like. I'm sure I quite like it, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I if yeah, it's, it's a tough one. It's I mean it, it's. Much better than you have any right to expect. Uh, it's not particularly original, but uh, yeah, it's it's gripping us quite a lot. I mean, we're we're like we're in for the long haul. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Yeah, I doubt that. Yeah, I doubt that too. Right, my number one is um, a game that I did not think I'd be playing this week in any way, shape, or form. It's a game called Lone Survivor. Have you heard of it? Nope. Uh, it's an indie game on the PC. Um, I heard about it on. The Destructoid podcast, actually. The guy started talking about it, Jim Sterling. Uh, and I went to have an investigate and I ended up um, producing a review for it for Video Gamer, which I think goes live this week. Um, it's a 2D pixel art survival horror game with uh, heavy, heavy influence by Silent Hill. But it out Silent Hills, every Silent Hill since Silent Hill 3, easily. It's uh, really genuinely unsettling I mean it looks like a fucking 16 bit game and you run it in a window but what the guy has managed to do with that with that limitation is astonishing Um, it's well written it's scary I mean it's a scary game you you, it basically takes place in in an apartment complex familiar Silent Hill-esque tropes Uh, you go outside and there's weird fucking weird shaky head enemies that make horrible noises and you can barely see and you're very weak uh, but it does st- 
stuff that the, the old Silent Hill games did brilliant well it gets very Lynchian and what I mean by that is it very early on you walk into a room and there's just a party happening and you're in the middle of this fucking apartment where everybody's there just been some sort of a post-apocalypse thing and there's just this party playing with people kind of standing there and vacant looks in their eyes listening to lounge jazz and you're just like what the fuck's going on and they're just talking in a way that it's like they're talking to you but they're not really and it, it just kind of reminded me of Blue Velvet it's obvious that that's what he's going for but there's stuff like that happens all the time and you never know what's going to happen next um, I'd How highly recommend it? it it's uh, about three four hours long but it's a proper video game it's not like one of those art games where you just like walk forward and the story will happen it's a game with systems and mechanics and you know gunplay and you have to look after your bloke and feed him and he's going mad it's it's fucking good six quid i think lone survivor.co.uk if you're interested just go there download it for pc or mac uh, i'd recommend it to anyone who likes uh, horror games i think it's it's brilliant i gave it nine out of ten shit that sounds really good it's um, really good again no demo though uh, there is there is a demo there oh. is a demo on uh, congregate you know congregate with a k nope go there there's an in browser demo Oh, okay. See what right, it's all about. Um, yeah, I should have mentioned that before. Uh, yeah, the atmosphere is and the music. I mean, this is just one guy's work. Uh, check it out, please. Everyone should play it. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'll do that. Uh, okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's us done. Uh, again, I don't think we've made the forty minutes, but will we ever? One day. Not one day. Um, yeah. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, check out the site, thefinalplaylist.com. John and I's Twitters are on there. Um, yeah. We'll see you next week. Peace out. A little apple skipping down the path. Plamel, plamel. Along came a dwarf bag, kicked him in the arse. Plamel, plamel. Oh, you arse fuck, dirty rotten scum. Plamel, plamel. Do that again, and I'll fuck your mum. Plow them all. I thought a Pac-Man game would be that. Everyone I know who's tried it went out and bought it straight after. It is really fucking good. I need to get back into yeah. that, actually. Yeah, um, I just put, pop it on every now and then just for, for ten minutes. Can't beat it, really, for that. No, you're right. You're right. Um, okay, my number eight. Another game that I randomly put on because I saw it on my hard drive and I thought, eh, hey, why not? Tower Blocks Deluxe. Hey, Tower but, Blocks. What, what a funny game. It's amazing how something that simple can be that captivating. Um, and I remember when I first discovered it around your place when we would just didn't do anything else for the best part of an entire weekend um, just stacking blocks one on top of the other <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous but I remember coming home and but, uh, finding it on the marketplace and I've never been so confident that I was getting my 800 points worth I, I did not even in the best of times when you buy something on marketplace I think twice I think uh, is there anything else coming out blah 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 but in that instance I was just like of course it's worth 800 points and uh, it's it's ridiculously enjoyable and s sickeningly simple but yeah stacking blocks all the way up into space yes uh, nerve wracking to say this to uh, say it, the least. later on yeah especially if you because it's got that constant reminder to the right of the next high score of your friends yeah. list to beat but yeah it's great you get into a flow don't you when you're doing it and then you just lose it completely yeah it's, and it's the tiniest thing that could set you off and it can be maddening but yeah it's, yeah. Uh, it's, still, it's still good I just it, there's something very funny about the fact that that's as captivating as it is you know in any other form you know a book a movie anything that captivates you that <laughs> tends to be a bit more complicated than fucking dropping but I remember I picture us around your place you know there, how many of us were there like six people all staring yeah, at the screen like yeah. can't, you know gripped yeah. it was when we all suddenly realised how how far you could get in the game you could go up into space because I think we'd only ever played it for about five minutes before that yeah good uh, times it's uh, yeah it's well, yeah. I'll play it. playing online and I think it's better than FIFA 12 you, uh, blimey but it's, it's basically it's, FIFA 11 though isn't it it's it's sort of the best bits of FIFA 12 with um, without the tactical defending and some of the, the shitty bits of FIFA 12 I find um, apart from the fact that you can jab the back of the back of the Vita and that did you use up, that that's annoying I didn't use it deliberately, but like you, I've got flappy hands, so yeah, it, it happens sometimes. But um, yeah, it, it feels like FIFA 12 without tactical defending, which is bang on for me. Um, no, I, I like tactical defending. The only thing I didn't miss is the, the, the irritating, you know, when you get 
fucked over because the animations all decide to bundle on top of each other and stuff. Um, oh, I really liked it, but yeah, I, I think FIFA 12 pisses on it, to be honest, but then I thought FIFA 12 was better than FIFA 11, so... I think FIFA 12 is better than FIFA 11 in many ways, but I like the concept of tactical defending, I just don't like the execution. Uh, it's too laboured and it's too easy to walk through. It's far too much of an advantage for the attacker. Um, it doesn't capture the fact that in real defending you can grab hold of people and you know you don't just have to time a tackle exactly right. You can use your body and, and sort of push people around and use space a lot better than you can. I, I like where they're going and I'm sure they'll nail it in, if, if not next year, then the year after. But uh, yeah, a little bit of work to be done on that one, I think. So but, you're not yeah, going to buy the you're not going to buy the full game. Or on the Vita. Yeah, it's like it's it's the most expensive game on the machine, I think. No, really. it's not more expensive than Uncharted, is it? Yeah, I think it's like forty-four quid, what? which is a hell of a lot of money for a Vita game. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, probably not, because that, that it pretty much gives me enough. I, just for a quick game of football every now and then. That okay. demo. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Okay. Right. My number nine, Texas Hold'em on the Xbox 360. Um, I Drunk. don't know why. I... Where brevity is paramount. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Chet and John's Reassuringly Finite Gaming Playlist. My name's John Denton and with me as always is Chet Roivas. What's happening? So if you've not heard this podcast before, it's really simple. Uh, it's two top 10 lists basically. Um, we've each got a list of the game we've played the most this week. Uh, we reel them off from 10 down to 1, 10 being the game we played the least, 1 being the game we played the most. And because we're both fortunate enough to work in the games industry, uh, we get stuff early and can talk about the stuff that's not even out yet. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that kind of stuff. Enough for the wittering. Uh, let's start with Chet's number 10. Okay, right. My number 10 is Sin, is Mon- Sin and Punishment 2 on the Nintendo Wii. Uh, I met up with some friends over the weekend and they all play games uh, and they're like me or like you they have to have every machine you know there's no point in limiting it to having one machine and one of them has inexplicably sold all of his consoles apart from one guess which one the Wii no Um, the Game Boy (laughs) well no Xbox no uh, PS3. Yes, he's right. one of the, he's one of those guys now. So everything related to PS, the PS3 might as well have been shut out by his mother because he <laughs> won't have a bad word said against it. Oh uh, no! And we got into a, an, I'll call it a discussion, but we were both drunk and we have the most intense love hate relationship of any people that have ever lived. So it was more like uh, just hurting expletives of each other. But he said, as all PS3 lovers do, that that's got the best exclusives. Uh, and in, in in with regards to the Xbox 360, if it's a face-off between those two, I'd say, yeah, fair enough. I think I'll give him that one. But if you think that the exclusives on the PS3 are better than the ones on the Wii, you're on fucking crack. Um, and the discuss- I've no idea why I turned it on. Uh, it's it, They gave it away free about four years ago, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, it was like free for about two weeks and everyone I know Everyone had went it. mental for it. Yes. Um, and I just turned it on purely out of interest to see if you could still get a game because that new one came out full house with the implementation of the avatars and stuff and friends of mine who are really into poker have since upgraded to that. Uh, but yeah, Texas Hold'em, I jumped straight into a, a full full table game and it's, uh, yeah, it's as good as, I, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd pay any extra for a poker game because that's got everything you need. Uh, it's fine, but it's just... does everyone just still go all in? Because... No, it's the sa- every game follows the same pattern as it pa- pattern as it does in every online poker game where real money's not at stake. Everyone checks, and then Johnny Big Bollocks, the last guy to go in, goes all in. <sighs> Is he bluffing? I don't, you know, it's just it, 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 the, the routine's the same, but. You know, it was fun, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still. I just wanted to see if it was still working, and it is. So there you go. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah. My number nine is um, kind of in a similar vein to you, just something that I haven't played for a while and stuck on on Xbox Live. Um, Pac-Man Championship Edition. Oh, that's wicked. Um, yeah, I put it on now and again, just purely for the catharsis of when you get the pill and you just turn it right back on those cuds and chase them down, <laughs> chomp them all up. I love it. Uh, I- sort of came to uh, realisation with the game that I'm not going to be chasing high scores or, you know, worrying any leaderboards. I just play it like I used to play games for, just for fun, yeah. every now and then. It's just a laugh. I, I don't think I'm amazing at it, but, yeah, if you've not played it before, it is it is Pac-Man, but uh, they have this great mechanic where all the ghosts kind of line up. I'm doing a poor job of explaining it. So when you get a pill, you can kind of chase them down and combo them together. 
and oh man it's so satisfying do, 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 and the, the music goes and um, yeah they smashed it uh, yeah, for, for uh, I never should have prompted me to pick up one of my favourite Wii games of all time. One of my favourite games of all time, Sin of Punishment 2. I only played it for 15 minutes, so I'm going to delve into it over the weekend, but Christ, it's a masterpiece. And if you haven't played it and you have a Wii in your house, get it. It's it, incredible, incredible, incredible. And it's got a boss who calls you a perv when you hit him. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. What, what type of game is it for people that don't know? Uh, it's a shooter, but you have control of the guy. It's, it, Super Harrier, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's broadly speaking that, but it's just relentlessly bright ideas. I mean, I love cave shooters for what they do in that respect, but Treasure, this reminds me, when they're on form, they piss on any cave shooter, and this is this is probably their finest game. It's just it's a really intense, funny... Uh, the whole time I was playing it, you know how you feel when you leap out of your chair and you score an amazing game in FIFA? Just like, ah! Yeah, I yeah. was like that. I only played it for 15 minutes, but the whole time I was like, ah! I just wanted to fucking dry hump my TV or something. It's, <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, If you haven't played it... Shit, good. I haven't played it. No, I've always meant to play it. Yeah, I think... You know, the Wii. It's, uh, yeah... It, just play it. That's. The, I mean, it's just. It, I forgot how much I fucking love that that game, and I'm going to play it over the weekend and just uh, bask in the glory. Bask in the glory. Genuine. Right. Uh, my number ten is um, FIFA. In fact, it's FIFA Football 12 on the Vita. Uh, I only have the demo of this, but I play it quite a lot. It reminds me. Do you? Uh, you probably like this when you were a kid. I used to have so many demo discs, like from oh, yeah. official PlayStation or even back in Amiga format. Just that all my games were demos, I think, and I just used to keep them religiously and play them. Um, on the Vita, everything seems to have a demo, and because you can just download it and have it on the main menu, it's kind of cool. You can have a shitload of good quality demos. And um, it's almost enough for me, I think, that one match between Barca and AC. You get to see the game for, for what it's worth. You get to play with good players. You don't get fucked off by 